Jefferson families, it's Dr. Pedraza, your principal at Jefferson School. For our new families to Jefferson, welcome. For those of you who have been here for years, welcome back. I know we're not gonna be in the building for a couple of weeks, but we are happy to bring you back virtually on Monday. This presentation is gonna tell you a little bit more about what that's going to look like and hopefully answer the many questions that you have. Just know if at the end of this presentation, you still have more questions, that's completely normal. We've all got a lot of questions during this time. We are all doing our best to answer those questions as quickly as we can. So thank you for your patience and your grace with us. Um, those of you who don't know me, I've been the principal here for two years. This is my second year. Um, and prior to that, I was an assistant principal at Lincoln and at Hawthorne and also interim principal at Emerson. So I've gotten to know many of the wonderful teachers around the district, which has been fantastic. Um, I have also been an educator for, this is my 20 20th year. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, but I do love education. I love working with kids. My belief is a very much strength-based education where you get to know your kids and their strengths and you build from there. And with that, the sky's the limit. So that's a little bit about me. Um, with that being said, we're going to kind of get into the presentation. I would like for you to, first of all, excuse any of my faux pas in recording myself. This is probably my fifth time recording this video today. It is much harder to talk to a camera, I'm learning, than it is to talk to people uh, live. So thank you so much for forgiveness of my ums and my uhs. And I'm going to get started with the rest of the presentation. So our agenda for tonight, we're going to do some introductions, educating students remotely. What on earth is that going to look like? I know that's what you guys are all wondering. Uh, keeping students and staff safe when we get back in the building and communications and next steps. So Again, I'm Dr. Christina Pedraza, the principal, and we also have an assistant principal here, Mrs. Katie De La Rosa. She has been here for two years as well. This will be the start of her second year. Prior to this, she was an educator for quite a long time as well. We both absolutely love working with kids and it is a dream being able to work here. If you have any questions that are special education um, related, Mrs. De La Rosa is actually the person that you want to reach out to. She'll be the one who can answer those questions um, the fastest. You can ask me about anything, but she's kind of the one who heads that department in our school. All right, so before we begin, I know you all know this, but I just wanna remind everyone that we are one team all working together towards the success of every Jefferson student. One of my absolutely favorite things about remote learning in the spring was getting that window into everyone's homes and how we were bonding with the homeschool environment of education. And I think that we have an opportunity once again to really build on that and our partnership between home and school. And so I'm excited about that. I think we've always had a really wonderful homeschool connection here at Jefferson. And I think we have some opportunities to strengthen it even more. Um, something really important for you to know, and probably this attitude to have all year is, this is the best information we have today. As you know, in this crazy COVID world, things are changing very frequently. I will do my best to communicate with you as quickly as I can any new information that I have, which is with as much detail as I can. Um, and if you still have questions, please don't ever hesitate to reach out. Again, if I don't answer your questions in this presentation, you've got my email there, um, and I check it on a regular basis. Right now, I have to apologize. I am a little bit behind. It has been a little bit um, different start to the year, but I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you don't hear from me in like two days, go ahead and reach out again. I apologize for you having to do that, but I'm just letting you know, I don't consider anyone a stalker. I appreciate um, a little bit of a reminder. Sometimes I get a little bit of a backlog, especially this time of the year. So thank you for giving me grace and helping me with that. Okay, so then versus now, what has changed? All right, so ISBE, that's the cool way people in education say the Illinois State Board of Education. So the Illinois State Board of Education kind of is like our boss. They tell us what we can do and what we can't do. So I'm gonna move my face out of the way here so you can actually see it. And um, let you know that in the spring, they had recommended lengths of sustained attention provided with maximums and no synchronous. And that's a really fancy way of saying that they were recommending kids should only be on the screen or be focused on work for a certain amount of time. And they didn't give any advice about saying teachers had to be teaching live in front of kids. Um, there was no attendance guidelines. I'm sure some of you right now are like, man, I missed out on that opportunity. Um, and grading could only raise term grades. Now we have recommended five daily hours of learning with 
two and a half hours of synchronous learning in remote. So something for you to know, synchronous. Let's talk about that definition, right? It's not like synchronous swimming, although you can kind of think of it that way. So synchronous means I am teaching to my class live and in person and I'm interacting with that person. Asynchronous is when a teacher says, okay, I'm going to give you maybe a video of myself. You can watch it on your own or you can do it on your own time. And there's some benefits to both kinds of that. And you're going to see both of those um, as we're teaching this year. Daily attendance is expected and grading will be real time and reflective of student progress. Something to share with you is that teachers have had some options over these next three days starting today of different courses um, and classes that they can take. And some of them were based on um, grading and how do we really give kids powerful feedback in this weird time where I'm not going to be meeting you in person, but I'm going to be interacting with you online. And what does that look like? How do I give you good feedback that's going to move your learning forward? So that is exciting. So then with the next one, um, we have the D205. So then versus now, what has changed? In the spring, we had a varying awareness of resources, right? Everybody was like thrown into this like crazy mismatch of things where we all went to school and we got our curriculum guides and we learned about the common core and we learned really in-depth information about how do we teach kids reading and writing and math when we see them in person. And then some crazy person decided that we were going to have COVID in the world and we all had to go home to keep everyone safe. And then we had to figure out how to teach children where we couldn't actually be talking to them like really in person in the room. And so we were checking out so many different kinds of resources. I got to tell you all the teachers at Jefferson, that was like what they were exploring on a regular basis. Our instructional coach Pia was sending people all sorts of things. We had a hub of different things you could check out. So that was really cool. And we still have those resources now, which is awesome, but we are adding to them. So that is a bonus. Um, we could only use Google Meet. I don't know if you guys are aware of the Zoom bomb and if you ever got Zoom bomb, but there was this whole thing in the spring, Zoom has updated their, and by the way, Zoom bomb just means like somebody comes into the meeting, not they're actually like, bombing things. Um, just want to clarify that. But um, and somebody who shouldn't be in the meeting comes into the meeting. So we decided as a district that wasn't safe. So you could only use Google Meet. But now Zoom has stepped up their security. They've added all these new cool features. And so this year teachers can use Google Meet or they can use Zoom. Um, teacher availability was specified only from 10 to 1130. But you guys all know that our Jefferson teachers, we are emailing back around, around the clock and responding so that they could really help you guys out. And that won't change. Our teachers here are continually, continually completely dedicated. And then each week we had one session or day of professional learning where Dr. Moyer would um, send us a video and we would have a focus of what we were looking at. And so now we've got increased access to all sorts of cool resources that you will get to see. We've got Zoom and Google Meet, so two options. Uh, daily teacher availability during class and hours of the school day. Um, and then we've had all sorts of professional learning sessions this week that teachers have been offered. Our instructional coach and our library, our librarian put together this mini course about blended learning that anyone in the district can take and that's been very successful. Our teachers have done a lot of professional learning on their own as well. The district has offered other um, things on reading workshop. There's been a lot of things that have been offered. Uh, we have a new administrative team in the district and we also have parent support options and trainings, and you will learn a little bit more about that as well as the year progresses. Okay, so educating students remotely. I'm going to start out and tell you some like big, broad things, and then I'm going to save the actual schedule and what that looks like for last. So please try to contain yourselves and hold on to your anticipation of what that will look like. Okay, so our remote learning instructional delivery model. Daily attendance is going to happen. So just like when we're in school and kids come to school and we take attendance and it goes in power school, teachers are going to do that, except for they're not going to see them in person. They're going to see their lovely little faces on the Zoom screen. Um, you need to know, though, that you have to call in absences. Even though your kid is technically not absent from being in the school, they are absent from the Zoom meeting, which is the school. So you need to make sure that you are calling those in just like you did when we were in school. Uh, scheduling efforts made to replicate a school day at school. Okay, so that's just a fancy way of saying we made a schedule and it's going to be followed. So in the spring, it was all that asynchronous stuff where you had a choice board and your teacher would set up sometimes where they would meet with the class. But now your teacher is really gonna be meeting with the kids 
all day for the five hours for most of it. And I'll show you more of that when I get to that top secret schedule that is coming. Um, now we have a blend of synchronous. Again, that's when the teacher is talking to the screen. And asynchronous, that's when students can choose to work on things at different times. Um, and it occurs according to approximate minutes of schedules. And then I keep saying this Google Classroom and Zoom have been activated for use in 20 to 21. Uh, grading is going to return to a tra traditional format. So kids are be going to be getting that standards-based um, reporting number. Teachers themselves, though, are going to share grading details with you over the weeks as we go and kind of the specifics for each grade level. What does that look like? What kind of feedback are they going to be giving? How often and all of that? Okay, so IEP 504 and EL services provided in a remote format. So this is, we're basically just letting you know that service providers and case managers will collaborate with you at the beginning of the year to coordinate services. So if your child qualifies for that, someone will reach out to you or may have already to work that out. Each student is getting a district issued technology device. And you know at Jefferson that is happening tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. I am so sorry that we had to switch the date today. We had some things with construction that just didn't make it possible for us to hand out devices today. But I promise you the construction happening in our building is magical and you're going to be so happy with all the things that are being done to our school. Um, parents are encouraged, that is you, to provide a distraction-free classroom. I have a whole slide where I talk about this, so I'm not going to talk about that anymore right now. Um, and if possible, I, I would say you should provide a distraction-free classroom, Do not distract your children while they are learning. Um, Next, we have um, specials and electives will continue to the fullest extent possible. When you see the top secret schedule that is coming out in a few minutes, um, you will see that students are going to be having specials at a scheduled time every day, which is exciting. Okay, so students are going to attend virtual Zoom classes from home at scheduled class time. And your teacher is going to be sending out more information about that. I want to let Jefferson families know that um, by six o'clock this Friday, you will get a communication from your child's teacher with more information about how your child will be logging in on Monday. Um, the teacher is going to be providing directions for class activities by the school day start time. So you're going to get a daily message from your child's teacher. And then your kids are going to get a daily morning meeting with the teacher where they're going to be checking in with that synchronous piece um, and talking about all sorts of social emotional things, what's going to be happening for the day, just like in a traditional school day, except for it's going to be on the computer. Collaboration can occur at small groups. This made me so happy because we have so much collaboration here at Jefferson. Like that is a hallmark of instruction. We know how important it is for kids to learn the skill of collaborating with one another. And that is something that we just build naturally into the day. But in the virtual world, that's been really difficult. So Zoom has these cool things called breakout rooms. Um, where teachers can set up this virtual space for just a certain number of kids. And those of you who have used Zoom in your professional life, you probably know this and probably use them themselves, but where they can meet with a small group of students or they can send two kids to do what we would normally call a turn and talk about a question. But there's so many possibilities and we'll be exploring that and getting better with that as the year progresses. Um, but that's a nice way where we can add in more collaboration with kids. Um, there's definitely gonna be relationship building in SEL. SEL is social emotional learning um, opportunities available. Web conferencing just means meeting in like a virtual Zoom and small groups of students. So relationship building is where our teachers are starting the year. I just want to let you guys know that just like we do in a regular world. We want to get to know your kids. We want to get to know how they're doing. I, I We've had a lot of changes since we last saw students. We need to know how that's affected them. We also want to know what are their joys? What are their passions? What are they interested in? What are their strengths? And how can we build on those? And so we're going to be spending those um, first couple of weeks and then all throughout the year really working on those relationships. And then also those first couple of weeks are going to be setting up structures in the classroom, just like we do in the actual four walls of the school. We have to have structures set up so that kids can build independence and we can be successful no matter what subject we're teaching. So you're going to see a lot of that the first couple of weeks. Okay, so um, a little bit more to tell you about. 
this top part up here, formative feedback and learning opportunities and summative assessments, that's just different ways for teachers to gauge how well a student is learning. So formative feedback is more of that, I'm gonna ask a question to the kids that I'm teaching and I'm gonna see how they answer and then I'm gonna respond with my next follow-up question or my next teaching based on how they respond. It's kind of gauging how well kids are learning something. Summative assessments are more of like those things that like you and I had um, for teachers who are in my generation, um, the cool generation. Um, just kidding, everyone's cool. Okay, so, but, so the summative assessments are more like those exams and projects, which I personally loved as a kid, um, or reports, but that's the type of thing that's gonna be assigned. Um, and that is more of a, a final thing saying, okay, after we've done all this learning, how much have you learned? Whereas formative feedback is kind of in the middle of the process. Like we're just getting to know this, where are you at? Assessment and grading of student work is gonna take place, just talked about that, and Google Classroom for absent students. So that's one of the cool things that we can take advantage of. I know there's a lot of things that's like, oh, remote learning, mm. but it's nice for if kids are absent, all the work and all the things are gonna be in the Google Classroom. And so if you miss something, if you have to miss a day, it's like, no big deal, you can just go to the Google Classroom and figure all of that out. So um, that is nice to have that there. And teachers, um, maybe putting recordings of themselves in there so that students aren't missing out. So there'll be a lot of different things in the Google Classroom. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Um, all right, again, I already talked to you about students engaging in discussion. So how can you promote success in remote learning? This is an important one, right? I don't know if any of you have watched Sorry about that. I don't know if any of you have ever watched a Zoom of a preschool classroom, but it is fantastic to watch the first time it happens because you have children like hanging upside down or running to their room being like, look at all my stuffed animals. Um, so as fun as that is and as enjoyable it is to watch as a spectator, obviously it's not good for a teaching environment. So you wanna find a quiet workspace for your child and limit distractions as much as possible. When I'm at home and when I was working remote, my office is in the front of the house and I have an open floor plan, which is great for a child who's almost five to run around in and like make faces and do all sorts of things. So I have to close the door when I'm in meetings because I can get very easily distracted by that. Um, make sure your background is appropriate for a school setting. So just thinking about what's behind me, what's behind my kid. Um, have Zoom open and ready to go in the morning. Teachers will be sending Zoom invites via student email messages. A lot of our grade levels have decided that Although they're gonna be teaching different um, different subjects during the day, they are not going to get say, this is your Zoom link for math. This is your Zoom link for reading. It's gonna be one big Zoom link and the teacher will talk a little bit more about how that works, but that is gonna help with independence of kids, not having to be like, ooh, what do I click on at this time? It's just gonna be in that same space. So teacher will tell you more about that. Have your child mute the microphone unless asking a question for sure. And I know those of you who are in a work environment, we have to do that, right? We don't wanna accidentally have background stuff going on or we've got like a younger sister or younger brother crying in the background and disrupting the learning. So just make sure you do that as a practice. How can we promote success? Another thing, uh, the video should remain on to promote focus unless instructed by the teacher. So this is a big one, right? Cause it's kind of like, oh, what if my kid doesn't like being on screen? Well, the problem is the teacher is trying to gauge how the child is understanding the lesson that's going on. And we can see that in the way that they're responding. Um, we can also see if they've kind of tuned out, right? Like I, I'm pretty sure if you're just kind of staring up like this, you're not paying attention. I know um, it's funny to watch your own personal Zoom face when you're like really focusing on a meeting. I feel like people either have like a, a really upset face or like a really happy face. So anyway, teachers are looking though to make sure that like kids are focusing, how they can help them to learn. So we wanna have that video on. Um, dress to learn. This is a good one when we're talking about environment, right? So I may be learning in my house every day, but my brain isn't going to do that turn to, okay, it's work time and it's that focus time until I move to that separate space that's in the house. So making sure your kid's attire is reflecting expectations for student in-person school. Um, and that'll help them with focus too. All right. And then having water and snacks and materials available. So your kid's not having to like get up. Your teacher is going to provide breaks um, in the schedule, the top secret one that you're going to see soon. Um, and, and that will be a formal break for everyone in the class. But the teacher will also be, you know, saying, hey, we've been on the screen for a bit. Let's stand up. Um, they might lead them through a brain break and things like that. And during that time, it's definitely okay to have water and snacks. Everybody needs fuel for their mind. 
Okay, how can we promote success in remote learning? More of it. If you need tech help, and I know that that was one of the big things that we needed in the spring. The wonderful thing now is that we're all going to have the same devices. So I'm, um, we are all really, really hopeful that that's going to stop with some of the the issues that we were having on multiple devices. Um, so you can reach out to our technology assistant, um, Ms. Strong, and I put her contact information on there. Your teacher's child can support too, and your child too. Um, our kids are little tech ninjas, right? And if they can't figure it out, you can reach out, but there's lots of lots of places to get you help. Um, a place for parent tech support will be available soon. Details will be forthcoming. I will send that out in one of my communications. Attendance expectations. Attendance is expected every day. Um, although kids are at home and it is remote, it is still school and it's super important. And I, I know I'm preaching to the choir. You guys know that, but it still has to be said. So teachers will take attendance in the morning meetings each day starting at 8.15 a.m. Parents should report absences to the school office. I already talked about this, just like a typical school year. What if my student needs additional support? So just like the regular school year, reach out to your kid's teacher to share concerns and brainstorm solutions. Um, that is important. You can contact me. You can contact Mrs. De La Rosa. Um, we are happy to troubleshoot to help out any way we can. Again, this is a partnership this year. I want you to know and I, that we want to support you and want you to feel supported. So feedback, questions, comments, concerns, those are important. Um, Ms. Cusack, who is our school social worker, she can help too. She is awesome um, and has so many resources and so much knowledge um, that I, please, please reach out to her. She is happy to help out as well. When can we expect in-person instruction? This is also the million dollar question. So at this moment, we're working with the Illinois Department of Public Health. You can also hear people call it the IDPH um, and the GPH Department of Public Health. I don't have a cool acronym for that one. Other entities to ensure that we are able to offer safe in-person instruction. Our current plan is to offer a hybrid model as soon as September 14th. That is coming really quickly um, if it is feasible to do so. And so there's a lot of different factors that affect that. I will communicate with you as soon as possible if anything change for, changes for that. So please know that we are watching that regularly. We're looking at all the different factors that would affect that. So and this is a, um, a good one to know as well. In-person instruction prior to this date might be possible for some students with disabilities and families will be informed when this is to occur. Okay, so we will reach out to you if this is going to happen. We, again, commit to updating you on a regular basis. I'm going to give you another parent orientation, discuss the tr transition to in-person. We already have a plan for what that is going to look like. So please don't think that this is the only information about in-person. Will the school hours change? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> we really tried to have a full school day. We looked at all these different things. So I just want to let everyone know that this was not a a decision that was taken lightly. We looked at so many different factors, but right now we are really prioritizing safety. And so student safety during lunchtime with masks off, it was just becoming too challenging. Um, we want to be able to seamlessly transition from remote to hybrid and back again if necessary. So I'm telling you, this is going to help everyone as much as it's like, oh my gosh, my kids are coming home at a different time than I was anticipating. And I understand that. That adds a lot. Um, so our elementary hours are 8.15 to 1.15, half day kindergarten, for us is AM only, and that is 8.15 to 10.40. And these hours are gonna combine that synchronous when the teacher's talking directly and the asynchronous. But as you're gonna see in the top secret schedule coming out, almost, um, that most of it is going to be synchronous. So um, I, I think that's gonna help with some of that independence that we didn't have in the spring. <gasps> the top secret schedule is here! I feel like I need a bell. All right, so this is the schedule that we are going to be using. Your teacher, your child's teacher will share out specifics to this schedule that um, are related to their classroom. But as you can see, uh, we start the day in all grade levels with a morning meeting and it looks like I'm shaking my head. I'm actually moving this screen, so sorry. Um, so we have our English language arts, we've got acceleration still. We Kids get a break, you can see that in yellow. We've got specials, science and social studies, and math. So those are the subjects that you see on a consistent basis. They're just at different times and different grade levels, and that's to accommodate for when we come back um, to in-person, making sure that the schedule is going to stay the same as 
in the hybrid as it does in remote. And so we have some of that consistency that we need that is important to education. So you will get a copy of this as well, not just in this presentation. And again, your child's teacher is going to tell you a little bit more about it. Um, I do wanna let you know that this break time on here, when it is in hybrid time, that is going to be a snack and recess time for kids that is facilitated um, at school. but when the kids are at home during remote time, we're using that as a break from screen time. So um, this is a long time for kids to be online all day. And so we really wanna honor that, that kids you know, need a, a mental break from that. So that is going to be a break that's not facilitated by the teacher, obviously, because they're not in your homes. Um, so that is something for you to be thinking about. Specials will be occurring synchronously at this time. Um, and you will get more information from your child's teacher about how that is all going to work and log lo the logistics of that. Um, there is also a daily debrief that's not listed on here at the end of the day where your child's teacher will also be checking back in with the class and talking about how the day went and how the next day might go and a variety of different things. I have also included the reach schedule on here. You will notice that in the past, um, our reach ELA was during our acceleration block time, but because we had to shrink the school day, scheduling wise, we could not do that in all of the grade levels. So you will see that math will take place at the same time, um, but uh, reading will be taking place during the reading workshop time, not during the purple acceleration block that is on here. Okay. So this is just explaining, and you have seen this in the Open D205 guide. So this is explaining our minutes. Um, and again, these are, these are fluid minutes. This is a general estimate of what our minutes are going to look like. I'm not going to read that to you. You can take a look at that yourself. And then again, synchronous, asynchronous for half day kindergarten. Um, and what that looks like. Basically, they're going to be getting math and literacy. Um, and then the half day kindergarten remote, the specials would be um, asynchronous. So um, that, and actually specials would be 30 minutes of asynchronous in remote and in in-person actually because of the timing of everything. Okay, um, same chart. Same thing on here, just to take a look at what does that look like for the schedule for synchronous versus asynchronous for the in-person learning time though, as opposed to the remote. And again, I'm not gonna read that to you. Okay, so how will my student know where to log in and what to do? I know that's going through your head right now. Um, that is really important thing to know for the first day of school, right? Normally we just, we show up to school, we know where to line up, we know where all the grade levels are. So teachers will be sending Zoom invites to your child's Gmail address associate, associated, I can't talk with the school. Um, and that's Zoom, not Zoom, not like some other weird random thing. Sorry about the typo on that. Uh, username and passwords will be sent home with supplies on again, Thursday and Friday. So you will be getting that in your um, pickup. Teachers will set clear and consistent daily routines and procedures to maximize student independence. Again, that's what I was talking to you about, about the first couple of weeks about, we are going to be teaching subjects, but we're gonna be focusing really heavily on structures, routines, and building relationships with kids. Um, and students will have a task menu or a choice board so they know um, what to do next. So the teacher, this is that last bullet is going to look different in different classrooms based on what is happening. And that is going to continue to evolve as the weeks progress, as we have built in those structures and routines and relationships, and we start moving into more heavily content area. Just know that the schedule is going to build and evolve, but your teacher is going to explain all of that and be communicating. And remember, you're gonna get that daily communication from your child's teacher with things that you need to know as well. And also your kids are gonna be responsible for this as well. Okay, how do we access free lunch if needed? You can soon purchase breakfast and lunch meals through the Pushcoin web store, which is awesome. Pickups will be at the Brian and York, um, at Brian and York on Mondays and Wednesdays from four to six. And you'll need to order by Thursday to get meals for pickup on Monday and Wednesday. What will special, uh, special education services look like? It really depends on the student. And I know that's never a favorite answer um, to give, but it's also wonderful because we can personalize it for each kid instead of saying every kid gets the same thing. And it's really more important to be doing that. So um, we're gonna work to, to deliver many services via video conference as much as possible. 
when this isn't effective, we'll work on social distancing effectively. Okay. And some of the construction that we have going on is really going to help with that. And we may need to utilize additional methods for engaging with students using technology. So we have an awesome, awesome SPED team here. I am super confident that the services we would be delivering in person, they are going to continue to do just as well virtually. Um, and again, we will be working with you on this, on what this looks like. What about IEP meetings and evaluations? So we still probably are going to do many of our meetings remotely, right? We still a time we've got to maintain that social distancing. We've got to be wearing those masks. I'm in an office right now with my door closed. I just want to put that out there. Um, our administrators and school psychologists have developed a list of evaluations uh, which were not completed from the spring and those that need to be completed in the fall and we will work from there. And we're going to be working on lots of guidance for our teams on this topic. So this is something that um, there are so many different details and just nuances too. And it's a lot of conversations and figuring things out. So um, just know that as we are developing these things, we will be communicating with you. What will reach look like? So I talked about this when I was talking about the top secret schedule. That is not a top, not top secret. But um, students placed in reach math will not participate in math in their classroom. They're going to get a reach Zoom math Zoom class instead that they will get an invite to. And they so when the rest of the class is getting their math, it's the same thing except for it's going to be in a virtual space. Um, students in REACH ELA, they're going to get enrichment support from the REACH teacher during the, the English language arts block. So anytime you see that ELA, that's what we're talking about. And that'll include synchronous small groups. So that's when you're actually meeting with the teacher and asynchronous work provided by the REACH teacher. So, and Mrs. Sollers is excited to get started. We had a great conversation today. You might've seen me actually walking in the neighborhood, having a conversation. So how do we make sure our students have their um, SEL needs met? I gotta tell you, I am not worried about that at all here at Jefferson. Our teachers really are rock stars at building relationships with kids. Yesterday in one of our professional learning sessions, um, we had everyone explore a variety of different things that they could do and they came back and listed so many different ways they are going to build classroom community and the ways they're gonna build relationships with kids. Like, and it was so many things I couldn't have even thought of remotely on my own. So um, good stuff there. We are going to work with you to support socialization and friendships. That is difficult in this world. Um, to give a personal example, I've been asking my daughter, you know, how's school been going? Um, she is back in a summer school setting. She is going to be in kindergarten next year and she goes to Montessori school. So they offer a summer school and she just started. And she said she keeps getting yelled at for social distancing. So she wants to be friends with new kids, but they tell her she's getting, you know, too close. So I, I know how that is, that that is hard um, in this virtual space, even though she is in person, but we will be working on that. How do we do that? Some of that is some of those breakout sessions. Um, um, but we will continue to problem solve and work on how to build that um, here at school. And our teachers and teams are going to be doing that morning meeting. That is a place where we really build on a lot of those skills, small group interactions. Um, all of this is really going to work together. What role will the paraprofessionals play? So this is great. Um, so our paraprofessionals are essential. They are essential to the success of our kids. And we have been um, working with them and are continuing to work with them to get them training to talk about how can they support kids in this remote um, world. And so that is going to look different and you're gonna get more information about that coming out as well. So some of them, they may be supporting students via phone or um, in the Zoom groups, um, but we are really working in and all hands on deck and our PSRP or our paraprofessionals, um, if you know any of them in the building, they are just so dedicated and so knowledgeable. And we are really focusing on making sure we're using them to the best of our ability um, in the fall and doing a better job with that than we did in the spring. And, and so I'm looking forward to seeing how that um, goes. So what are the next steps? You'll be receiving more information from the school about in-person instruction in early September, which is like a week away. Um, you will be receiving more information from us about your classroom teacher assignment by Friday. Um, and you're gonna log into PowerSchool to view your child's class placement. So I know in the past we like sent letters out and stuff like that, we're not doing that. Um, so you're just gonna log into PowerSchool. And then your child's teacher is going to host a virtual meet and greet on Friday at 1.30. So think about this as like the ice cream social without ice cream and without actually being here, which sounds terrible when I describe it that way. But what I actually mean is it's going to be in that informal conversation. So I'm gonna be sending out to you 
a link to the meet and greet and it is a Google Slides with the teacher's face and you're gonna click on the Zoom link. And then once you have said hello to your child's teacher, you can also check in with specials. There's a link you can talk with me, um, Mrs. De La Rosa, all the different people in our building. You can pop in and out of those and just say hello. We would love to talk with as many um, people and families as we possibly can. And then again, I just wanna remind you that um, your child's teacher will be sending out a communication this Friday by six o'clock about information that you need um, for next week. So I just wanna say thank you. I think this was very long, um, but I hope it gave you at least a little bit more information. I just, I, I know that this is a unusual time. It can be a scary time because there's so much different and so much new, um, but I really want to encourage you, if you need anything, to reach out um, to me, to your child's teacher, to Ms. Cusack, to anyone in the building. We are all here for you. We are happy to help. We are one big, wonderful Jefferson family, and we're just so happy that we get to be a part of it with you. So thank you, and uh, we'll be in touch soon.